Alright, so this should be a Lewis Home Analog Weather Station, I think it's called, which I bought off Amazon. Let's open this up. So this has come to me all the way over from America, because uh, I couldn't find any for sale in the UK. So I'm really hoping it survived the trip, because uh, I think some of the glass is quite thin and delicate. I've read reviews of this online, and... Quite a few people have complained how they've received it broken. And they said that the glass is like really thin and fragile, so hopefully it's all in one piece. I actually even messaged the uh, the seller after I bought it, and I said, can you package it really well? Because I'm worried about it getting broken, um, you know, on its long journey. And they said something like, you know, it's don't worry, it's, it'll be absolutely fine, so... So, I think Lillard's is an American brand. Yeah, I spotted this because, well, I stumbled across it because I was looking for those, I think maybe you call them weather predictors. It's like a glass ball with water in it, and it's got like white fluffy stuff in it, and the white fluffy stuff changes according to, to the weather. So I was looking for one of those. And because of because of me doing that, I accidentally stumbled across this, and I thought that would look so cool on a shelf, and it'd be cool to use as well, you know, to uh, to see things change on it and stuff. So it's not the same, you know, it's not it's not an actual glass ball with water and like white stuff inside it. This is uh, it's quite different different, but it does like a similar kind of thing, I guess. This consists of like three different things. Okay, so we've got a box within a box there. Okay, so it's got the uh, the Lily's Home logo on it there. Now, I forgot to mention as well. Straight after I received this, I shook it to see if I could hear any broken glass. And luckily, I can't hear any broken glass, but I can hear kind of like kind of glass moving about and water so that will probably be the glass baubles which are in water inside a, uh, a glass tube <coughs> okay, let's get it on camera when it opens for the first time oh we've got another box within a box so yeah it seems like they have packaged this uh, really well So you can kind of really hear stuff moving around now. So here we have some information and more information. Okay, I think that's the uh, hydrometer. wooden base I'm not sure oh I think that's the die for the uh, I think it's called a barometer um, this will probably be the you can really hear it now so this will be the uh, the Galileo thermometer like a very old-fashioned thermometer. That's probably just for protection. And we've got some more uh, paper in there. All right, so let's start unwrapping stuff. So there's the base. Next up is the hydrometer. So 
So that will screw into the base there. So there is the uh, barometer. Looks really, really nice. Yeah, it would have been better if the base of this was properly flat, but it's not. It's kind of, it's got like a ridge and then a kind of like a bump in the middle. So it's kind of, I don't know, I guess it, it sits flat, but it kind of felt like it didn't at first when I put it into there. But yeah, it's kind of a, a little bit wobbly. I've got a syringe there. some piping. Oh, I completely forgot. Got the, uh, the food colour in there. There is the Galileo thermometer, which looks really, really nice. So let's stand that up. Kind of looks like a giant syringe or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> These are in the wrong holes. Um, let's turn it around. Kind of for some reason I kind of prefer the way it looks when this is on the right and this on the left for some reason. Alright so now we need to try and get it all on camera. Alright so I'm going to put these things um, back into the polystyrene just for safety because I need to screw the hydrometer onto the base. Alright so before I start putting stuff together let's take a look at the, uh, the instructions and, and this card and stuff. So there it says, thank you. We appreciate your purchase and look forward to hearing from you again. Service at lilyshome.com. And there's the, uh, the logo there. Let's see what it says about the, uh, the hydrometer. So it's explaining how to test and calibrate the hydrometer there. Let's look at the instructions for the barometer which is this. So it explains how it works there. It tells you what the box includes, it tells you the additional items you'll need. And it talks about filling the globe. I've got some diagrams there. It shows you the, uh, the tube there. Going into the barometer. That's to, uh, to get the water into the bar barometer, I think. And the last piece of paper with, with the instructions on it is for the Galileo thermometer. Based on a discovery by Galileo Galilei, lie, not, uh, 1564 to 1642. A very very long time ago and it talks about the history there how it works how to read there's some diagrams there oh, interesting it contains paraffin oil In case of breakage and contact with liquid contents wash hands with soap and water yeah, you should, you probably shouldn't put a flame there to it either do not ingest the liquid all right, so that's all the instructions. Okay, so unfortunately I've not been able to calibrate this hydrometer. The reading on it is wrong. This is actually the correct reading. So on this it's saying 
sixty percent there, whereas this it's about it's saying about thirty eight percent. I know this is right because I did try to calibrate both of these. What I did was I put this lid with the salt in it and a bit of water into this plastic tub and then I put both of these hydrometers in there and sealed it. Now when you put a small amount of salt with water into a plastic sealed tub or a ziplock bag after several hours the humidity in there will be 75% so after several hours when you know the humidity inside this is going to be at 75% you put a hydrometer in there and you leave it there for maybe an hour and then if it's reading 75% you know that the hydrometer is correct and you don't need to do anything to it. If it's not reading 75% all you need to do is to just adjust the hydrometer uh, to 75% and then you know it's going to be right. Which I did with this one. I think this one was about 5% out. and. Uh, yeah, it's just very simple to adjust it. You've got like a slot there at the back, so you just put in a small flathead screwdriver to adjust where the needle is. So it is now calibrated. It's showing the correct uh, humidity reading, which is 60%. Like I said with this one, it's not showing the correct uh, humidity reading. It's like showing 38%. And the reason why I've not been able to calibrate this is because in the back there's no proper screw there to turn it's like a little it's like a little brass thing with a few score marks on it and on Lily's website it says that to adjust this you just need to put in a small flathead screwdriver and just turn the screw or whatever it is that's inside to uh, to move the needle so when I put a small flathead screwdriver in there because it's just like it's just kind of like light score marks on some like little black brass thing it doesn't feel like I'm turning anything and most of the time the needle doesn't move but sometimes the needle will move a little bit other times it will move a lot and every time I pull the screwdriver out the needle just springs back to where it was so I'm not able to adjust this unfortunately so a few days ago I did email Lilies and I told them about the problem and asked them for help but they've still not got back to me yet so I'm thinking they probably won't get back to me because it has been quite a few days now so unfortunately this is just going to stay unaccurate unless one day maybe I'll figure out how to adjust it but I have screwed it onto the stand now as you can see there it's now screwed in so next is filling up the barometer So uh, there's instructions for that. Syringe, I think that's for injecting the water into the barometer. And some piping as well. And we've got the dye to make the water blue. And I've got the water. It says on this to use distilled water. I think the reason why it says on this to use distilled water is because if you use normal water and I think this might be food dye as well then after several weeks you might kind of like get bacteria in the water and stuff maybe the water might kind of go a funny colour I don't know but yeah this is some distilled water that I bought off eBay so let's open this up and there is the distilled water not considered harmful under normal laboratory conditions. Okay, so it says uh, ask a friend to hold the globe in this position while you fill it or rest it in a mug as shown. Since I'm just here on my own right now, I'm going to use a mug. So there's the mug. And let's get out the barometer. So it goes in like that. It says start with a tube disconnected from the syringe. Where's the tube gone? There it is. So let's undo this. I'm guessing this bit goes on the end of the syringe. Let's try and straighten it out. 
keeps curling up. Um, let's see. Feed one end of the tube into the globe until it reaches the bottom of the base. Be sure the tube is positioned so the liquid will fill the globe part of the glass, not the spout. Okay, so... Yeah, so this is how it needs to look. So let's try and do that. Pretty difficult getting this pipe in all the way into this because it's just wanting to kind of curl up. Let's try putting it in this way. <laughs> you can see the problem there, it's just it's just bunching up. Okay, I'm going to try and do this off camera and then I'll come back. Okay, with a bit of struggling, I've managed to do it. So let's put this into, onto the, uh, the mug there, like that. Okay, so what's next? Okay, it says fill the syringe, I guess with the distilled water. Attach it to the tube, then gently and slowly squeeze the water into the globe. So this is 100 milliliters, and it says on the instructions to use about 100 milliliters. That's interesting, it says on the bottle that it's 100 milliliters. Yeah, I filled this jug up to 100 milliliters and there's still an okay amount left in the uh, the bottle so strangely the instructions tell you to add the water to the globe and then add the dye to the globe well to add the dye to the globe you can have it because it's a dry powder you're gonna have to mix it with some water first so you can get it into the syringe and then pump it through the pipe and that kind of seems like an odd way of going about it to me it's a lot more logical and will be a lot easier to add the dye to the water first and then put the coloured water into the globe. I'll just get something to stir the water and I'll come back. Alright, so the closest thing to me was a chopstick. So I'm going to put some of this dye into, the, uh, into that water. Let's put some of that in. Okay, let's see what that does. Might not be enough. Oh well, I mean, that was a tiny bit of dye and it's like really coloured the water. I think that'll do. Um, yeah, I think I think that's probably the right shade of blue. I wouldn't want it too dark or too light looking, so I think that's that's about right. I'm gonna wash my hands because I've got dye all over them. Alright, so let's get some of this dye into the syringe. I'm actually going to put some paper down on there just so the dye doesn't go onto the table. Some of it already has, but luckily it's coming off quite easily. Alright, so let's get some of this into the syringe. Let's, uh, let's see. Kind of worried about this globe kind of falling out the cup and smashing because it's kind of it's kind of moving around a bit. So let's try and grab a hold of the piping and the globe at the same time to make sure the globe is not going to fall. And... Oh God! Put that into there like that. And now we will inject it into the uh, globe. So 
It's a really nice vivid blue colour, this water. Kind of almost like a fluorescent blue. Kind of neon looking. So I'm going to wash my hands again. Okay, so it says, after you place the globe upright, the water should promptly move into the spout about an inch. So let's try that. Let's get this tubing out. Okay. Let's see. Measure that, see if it is an inch. It's a bit less. Should I try and make it so it's an inch? I'm not sure. Um, okay, it says if it doesn't, you can fill the syringe with air, then using the tube, gently inject a small amount of air into the globe chamber while it's standing upright. Okay, well, let's try that then. See if this goes up. Yeah, only pressed it a little bit and it went up quite fast. So let's see if that's an inch. Yep, that's about an inch. All right, so I guess now I'll just wait for things to settle and see if this uh, this changes. Okay, so it's a while later, and the water in the spout has gone up a little bit. So let's take out the Galileo thermometer and put it there. So on the instructions it says that if it's lower in the spout than what it is in the chamber, that indicates high pressure, so it specs fair weather. And it is lower in the spout than what it is in the chamber, and it's not raining. I couldn't tell you what the sky is like because it's night time. And there it says if the water in the spout is higher than what it is in the chamber, then that indicates low pressure, so expect stormy weather. And I've had these different coloured food dyes in the kitchen cupboard for a long time now. So if I ever wanted to change, I could use one of these dyes with water. I've got green there, red more blue and I could mix some of them together to create different colours. So all of these bulbs are grouped together at the top which is what we've got on B there and so that means if all the balls float onto the top the temperature is below the lowest floating ball. So the lowest floating ball is this one and you might be able to see it's got a gold, I'll do a close up in a minute you might be able to see it's got a gold tag on it there and it says 65 Fahrenheit so that means the temperature is below 65 Fahrenheit and on this uh, thermometer it is indeed below 65 there so these Galileo thermometers they're not as precise as like these kinds of thermometers or like LCD thermometers but I think these are these are some of the oldest thermometers um, around, these Galileo ones. So yeah, I'm not sure where I'm going to put this. I might put it on the kitchen windowsill, the bathroom windowsill, the bedroom windowsill, or I might have it on the shelf in the living room. It does say on this that the best place for it, well, for, at least for the barometer anyway, is that it's it should be out of direct sunlight but near an open window on a flat surface uh, because the instrument is made to measure air pressure changes caused by weather systems it may not work properly inside a well sealed or temperature controlled building so for the barometer to work the best it needs to be like next to a, an open window and away from any heat sources like radiators or anything like that so I'll give you a closer look at this. So yeah, I forgot to mention that some of these continents on the glass globe are pretty messed up, like 
South America there, it's like it's totally slanted when it should be straight like that. And then over here, it's like so. Europe looks correct, you know, it's like pretty straight, but then Africa again, it's like it's slanted, it's tillered. And in Australia, it looks like it's kind of squished that way. So it's not it's not just this particular one that's like it, like I've got a faulty one. I've looked at many, many pictures of these uh, Lily's home analog weather stations and all of the glass globes are like this with, you know, with messed up uh, continents on them. So I don't know why they've never bothered to uh, to fix the messed up continents on the uh, on the globes and they just and they've just continued to keep producing them like that. And there's the uh, the hydrometer there, and then the Galileo thermometer. So when it gets warmer, this liquid it gets less dense, and so some of the bulbs or all of the bulbs, it depends how hot it is, they'll start sinking and going downwards. And when it's colder, the liquid gets more dense, which makes the bulbs float upwards. So you can see a nice close-up there of the uh, bulbs. Um, yeah, I just think this is really nice looking. I love, I love the, the way the bulbs look with the coloured liquids inside them. Then you've got the, like these gold tags or weights um, connected to them. So you can see that says 64 Fahrenheit. I think before I was saying 65 Fahrenheit for some reason, but no, it's 64 there. And then you can see the others. So, it's all in Fahrenheit. I was hoping that maybe on the other side of the tags it would say what the temperature is in Celsius, but no, it's just all Fahrenheit. So in the UK we mainly use Celsius and that's what I'm used to, but I guess I'll just have to get used to, uh, to Fahrenheit. And of course, you know, if you want to kind of change how it looks, you can just kind of turn it around and see the, uh, the bulbs from different angles. But yeah, a very, very nice looking weather station. So we've got 64 Fahrenheit there. Is that saying 58? It's kind of hard to see from where I am. 72 there. Uh, 76. And 80. So yeah, a very, very nice looking weather station. If you want to get a hold of a weather station, you know, you want one that's going to be precise, then this is probably not the best one to get. You're probably just better off getting like an LCD one or whatever. It will be a lot more accurate. But I think, you know, as a novelty factor, as like a as something to look really nice on your shelf, like as, as a conversation piece, I think this is really, really great. I think it looks really, really nice. And it's going to be a lot of fun just watching things change on it. So yeah, that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching.